Sure. I think one of the big issues or changes over the last decade is the increasing use and growth of specialty drugs, specialty products, um, high cost specialty drugs that are treating long term chronic conditions, rare diseases, orphan diseases. And, um, you know, that has a big impact on managed care entities as well as uh, pharmacy benefit managers who are obviously trying to control and curb cost, uh, pharmacy costs. But, you know, you have to weigh that with the long term medical benefits of, uh, you know, the products that are oftentimes life saving treatments. Um, so that cost benefit analysis com comes into play. Uh, I think another thing that we're seeing as well is the rise of drug transparency. Um, you know, a drug price transparency, that is, and um, that really impacts the consumer. Uh, so you have um, companies like GoodRx that are, you know, helping to make uh, uh, drug treatments more affordable um, at, the, at the retail pharmacy. Um, you also have, um, which, which has implications on, on the patient in terms of their shopping patterns, how, how they uh, procure and, and fill their scripts. Uh, and it has changed, uh, I think, the, the type of information and data that, that people are using in order to, to, to purchase products. You know, I think one, one of the drivers of change, uh, especially from a price transparency front, has been affordability um, and access. Uh, we kind of touched on that, but really important um, to have to drive adherence. And in order to do that, you know, making the scripts more affordable, making them easier to fill, um, all of those are things that are, are trying to, you know, improve the long term um, continuation of therapy. I think the other thing uh, that that's changed in the ecosystem is that uh, we're trying to empower the physician to have more data at the point of care in order to make informed decisions around real-time benefits and what's covered, so that ultimately you know the patient can um, have greater affordability and and therefore coverage, lower out-of-pocket costs, lower copays associated with with the pharmacy scripts that they'll they'll be filling, um, and then also at the point of care, I think. Um, helping steer the the patient to the right pharmacies that will have uh, the product to be filled um, immediately as opposed to having to wait uh, to start treatment. I think all of those things are really all in the in the vein to help improve the access, the affordability, and ultimately the improved patient outcome. The managed care pharmacy market needs to use a game theory approach to the way that they think about new pharmacy models. And um, in game theory, you realize that you're not going to win every single, every single play, every single hand. And so what is it, um, what are the elements where you want to dig in to win the battle? And a, and a great example of that would be on, um, on prior authorization of certain therapies. Uh, some there there may if if you take a look at the broader patient population you would find that most patients end up on therapy on the branded therapy um and and maybe it wasn't worth the the battle and so you may have to change your formularies and your prior authorization practices to to focus only on those therapies where you get a differential outcome There are lots of areas of disruptive in innovation, and uh, the the key is to really focus on large numbers. And so, those large numbers could be a large number of patients, which is where you see Amazon and and Mark Cuban playing, um, or focusing on a large number of paying entities, uh, in which you're talking about. Uh, uh, middle market self-insured employers, uh, or where are, where are the dollars? And the dollars are in specialty pharmacy. And um, the, the thing about specialty pharmacy is it really is specialty by specialty, therapeutic area by therapeutic area, 
disease state by disease state. And that game is won by building those on top of each other um, and winning one, one hand at a time. Um, I think what you'll see is uh, managed care, care players um, focusing on disease states, focusing on particular patient populations, um, where there are opportunities to um, help guide care and uh, not just act as a gatekeeper, but act as a facilitator to make sure that patient outcomes are uh, what they can be. And, and we're not just throwing uh, the kitchen sink of uh, therapies at, at patients, but really um, crafting solutions in a cost-effective and um, efficacious way. We spend a lot of time working with payers, um, TPAs, um, and, and keep a close watch on the lower end of the self-funded employer market. Um, I think we, we may be entering a part of the economic cycle where uh, cost sensitivity goes up um, and employers are more interested in, than ever in, in looking at innovative models that um, can ultimately help uh, manage costs, keep their employees uh, healthy and, and uh, you know, sometimes uh, with a, a difficult uh, downturn, there's, there's a lot of innovation um, on, on the edges and it's, it's something to keep a, an eye on. You know. We often think about modalities and um, when you look at specialty pharma and, and where the costs are going up, um, there's actually a lot of changes in terms of how drugs are going to be delivered, um, where they're going to be delivered, um, and I, I think it's something to keep an eye on because um, just because something was done one way in the past doesn't mean that's going to apply going forward. And um, ultimately, there's going to be a lot more options um, and players throughout the ecosystem are going to have to work um, within different frameworks and uh, kind of interact uh, with patients, providers, um, and different stakeholders in new and creative ways.